So hello everyone and welcome to Ecoholics. Here what we'll discuss is the important announcement that uh, the finance minister announced today and these are very important measures in order to recover our Indian economy. So Namaskar, in this lecture I will tell you that today the economic reforms have been taken especially the corporate income tax. उसको फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर ने कैसे अनाउंस किया और क्या उसके रेपरकशन होंगे जस्ट फॉर द रिमाइंडर इफ यू हैव एंड जॉइन दिस फ्री टेस्ट सीरीज ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स ऑप्शनल इंडियन इकोनॉमिक सर्विसेज एंड यूजीसी नेट सो यू कैन रजिस्टर दिस ऑन आवर वेबसाइट दैट इज ecoholics dot in एंड दैट रजिस्ट्रेशन इज फ्री सो यू कैन रजिस्टर आफ्टर विजिटिंग आवर वेबसाइट So we see from the today's newspaper, there's one news for room for rate cut as discussed by the Governor Shakti Kanta Das. But we'll discuss this news later on and we'll first discuss the important news related to the corporate income tax. Although that news will come um, in tomorrow's newspaper, but here this is very very important and very very fresh. So we'll discuss that news in today's lecture itself. <clears throat> now we see the corporate income tax, which is popularly known as CIT. Now this corporate income tax plays an important role. Like this corporate income tax gives government around 21% of their total revenue. Now what happened today is the Honorable Finance Minister announced that cut in the corporate income tax now cut in the corporate income tax actually is a series is a part of series of reforms like if you reduce the tax it will give extra income into the hands of the companies so they will actually able to invest in the market and boost the indian economy that is the purpose behind the decrease of this tax now this is obviously done in the middle of the year so it is done by the with the help of ordinance now ordinance to the two act that is income tax act of 1961 and we can say the uh, another one is the finance act so finance act of 2019 this is a budget so about the revenue now here Indian tax rate now after reducing this corporate income tax now it is equivalent to uh, the India's competing Asian peers so other Asian countries now we are at par with other Asian countries so that is very very vital in order to attract the investment into our country now we start a discussion that how much they have reduced so for domestic corporates for domestic corporates we have we have actually reduced the income tax corporate income tax from effective rate of 34.94 percent to 25.17 percent that is for the uh, domestic corporates now this is obviously the effective rate it means that is inclusive of surcharge as well so if you don't know about surcharge you can ask in the comment box I'll tell you apart from this for the new manufacturing so for new manufacturing companies it is actually effectively decreased from 29.1 percent to 17 percent and these rates I'm telling you these are effective rates it means the maximum rates after availing certain exemptions as well as rebates or other tax soaps and this is the effective rate obviously including of surcharge as well and these new manufacturing will be 
availing this facility from the 1st October 2019. So they have to establish or set up before this date and they have to commence their operation before 31st March 2023. So in Hindi, I will tell you that the domestic corporates have a tax rate, effective tax rate, it has been reduced from that. And the new manufacturing companies have been reduced from that. And the new manufacturing companies have been reduced from that. And the new manufacturing companies have been reduced from that. And the new manufacturing companies have been reduced from that. And the new manufacturing companies have been reduced अब इसके बाद डिस्कस करते हैं जो फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर है उन्होंने जो कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स रेट कट किया है उसका इफेक्टिव टैक्स रेट अगर आप देखें तो ऑलमोस्ट 10 परसेंटेज टू 12 परसेंटेज पॉइंट दे हैव रिड्यूस नाउ आल्सो वी कैन से दैट दिस इज एक्चुअली गिव अ चांस फॉर द न्यू कंपनीज न्यू मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट्स टू एक्चुअली एस्टैब्लिश इनटू इंडिया एंड व्हेन दे एस्टैब्लिश इनटू इंडिया सो यू कैन सी फ्रॉम द बिहेवियर ऑफ Sensex and Nifty. They both closed at around 5% gain. So higher from the previous close. So biggest one day rise in the last decade. This is a good sign that the market is welcoming these kind of decisions and reforms. Now the question arises why government is reducing the taxes. So this taxes, tax reduction is the part of the series of reforms as we had discussing in our previous lectures as well. So the corporate tax rate obviously decreased due to tackling the slowdown in the economy. So the economy is slowdown down, it is tackle karne ke liye tax rate kam kiya ja raha hai. Kyun? Kyunki Q1 mein jo growth hui hai, quarter 1, jo ki aapka hota hai April to June 2019 in India the GDP growth was 5 percent registered if you compare Pakistan then it was 5.4 percent so Pakistan was also reduced the GDP growth rate in India so this is a good idea so that is a sign of worry so the immediate decision with the finance minister is to reduce the tax rate because if you reduce the tax rate it will work as the part of expansionary fiscal policy uh, what will be the impact on the economy so we'll see kya isse impact kya padega economy pe ab tax cut hua hai to usse kya hota hai jaise ki maine aapko bataya ki it will give more money in the hands of the people or as well as in the hands of the private sector in general so now what will happen? Obviously they can invest, they can contribute towards the economy. So whenever this will happen, it means they will invest and allocate more capital into different different sectors. And these lower taxes, actually what will they what they will do? They will attract the new investment. Because right now India is at par or lowest tax rate India is having in the Southeast Asia. So here we can say that this is a biggest reform since we can say the slowdown has started. Now the important thing here is this tax cut actually raised concern for our fiscal deficit. Now fiscal deficit is an important thing. Like here we see the fiscal deficit target. Fiscal deficit generally is ka ek matlab hota hai, jo fiscal deficit actually kya batata hai, wo borrowing batata hai sarkar ki to kitni borrowing hai, wo dikhata hai to agar fiscal deficit ka aap target dekhe 2019-20 ka to wo 3.1% hai aur jo ki expected rate jo budget ke time diya gaya tha wo 3.4% sorry, haan 3.4% diya gaya tha 3.4% unho ne target se ज़्यादा दिया था इसका मतलब टारगेट 3.1 परसेंट है और सरकार ने 3.4 परसेंट के आसपास मेंटेन करने के लिए कहा गया था इसका मतलब 30 बेसिस पॉइंट से ओवरशूट हो रहा था अब कॉर्पोरेट इनकम टैक्स कम करने से सरकार को लगभग 1.45 लाख करोड़ का नुकसान होने वाला है सो दिस लॉस टू द रेवेन्यू ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट इज नोन एज दर्म रेवेन्यू फॉर 
ये जो टर्म है जिस वजह से कॉरपोरेट इनकम टैक्स कम किया गया है तो सरकार को लगभग 1.45 लाख करोड़ का नुकसान होने वाला है उस टर्म को हम कहते हैं रेवेन्यू फॉरगोन या हम एक और टर्म से जानते हैं उसको टैक्स एक्सपेंडिचर इस चीज़ को हम टैक्स एक्सपेंडिचर भी कहते हैं सो वॉट वी से इस टैक्स एक्सपेंडिचर और रेवेन्यू फॉर गोन ऑफ वन पॉइंट फोर फाइव लैख करोड़ सो नाउ द गवर्नमेंट इज स्टिल स्ट्रगलिंग टू मेनटेन द फिजिकल डेफिजिट टारगेट और टू मेट इट्स फिजिकल डेफिजिट टारगेट बट हेयर द सेम टाइम गवर्नमेंट हैज वन इम्पॉर्टेंट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू रिवाइव द इकोनमी सो दैट्स वॉट गवर्नमेंट इज एक्चुअली डूइंग बाई प्रजेंटिंग द करंट टैक्स कट टू ऑब्वियसली now the government is thinking that it will boost the manufacturing sector and the manufacturing sector ko boost milega to jo tax loss hua hai usko compensate hoga kyunki new businesses aayenge new items honge zyada production hoga to obviously sarkar expect kar rahi hai ki kuch extra tax revenue milega ab sabse pehle baat dekhte hain ki this tax cut what does it mean and what will be the impact final impact on this now there are questions like number one question is will it be there in the long run so this is the biggest question ki aaj ki tarikh mein to hai बट क्या ये लॉन्ग रन तक सस्टेन करेगा क्या सरकार वापस टैक्स इंक्रीज कर देगी या नहीं तो ये क्वेश्चन अभी देखने लायक है अब The second thing is that this is not a structural reform. तो ये structural reform नहीं है इसमें structure को change नहीं हो These are simple incentives. अगर आपको कल का lecture याद होगा तो मैंने उसमें कहा था कि government क्या कर रही है incentives दे रही है बल्कि government को proactive होके economy में spend करना चाहिए तो दोनों चीज़ों में fiscal deficit पर strain आएगा ये पक्की बात है But The important thing is incentives will be like an indirect effort, and whenever we do the uh, expenditure, government expenditure, that will be a direct impact on the economy. Now, obviously, these tax cuts are having uh, obviously will improve the uh, we can say expanding into the economy because after cutting down these taxes, private sector will have more money into their hand, so that will actually boost the demand. but the most important thing is the problem of aggregate demand and not the supply side economics now here we can say that the supply side crisis is just because of gst because hasty implementation of gst as well as complex structure of india's gst actually creating certain problems now what government is doing government is not addressing the aggregate demand in the economy they are thinking from the supply side economics now here these tax cuts and other structural reforms actually will increase the india's competitiveness in the market so we can say that it will actually give india an edge over the other uh, south east asian countries to usse kya hoga agar jo trade war ho raha hai jaise maine aapko bataya jo trade war chal raha hai uske wajah se kya ho raha hai trade war ka aap mera lecture dekh lijiyega ट्रेड वॉर में क्या हो रहा है चाइना जो है चाइना से फॉर्म्स रीलोकेट कर रही हैं और वो वियतनाम उनका फेवरेट डेस्टिनेशन हो गया है तो ये कॉरपोरेट इनकम टैक्स कम होने से ऑब्वियसली वो इंडिया को भी एक फेवरेबल डेस्टिनेशन मानेंगे इन्वेस्टमेंट लाने के लिए तो ये इंडिया के लिए बहुत अच्छी चीज़ है बट सबसे बड़ा क्वेश्चन ये है कि ये लॉन्ग रन में रहेगा क्या कि शॉर्ट शॉर्ट टर्म के लिए ये रिफॉर्म्स लाए गए हैं तो ये कि बहुत बड़ा क्वेश्चन है now the next thing that we'll discuss about is the regarding the news so according to our uh, we can say governor rbi governor he is saying that inflation is under 4% so we can have more room to cut the our repo rate once again so ye hai abhi tak agar aapko koi doubt hai so you can ask otherwise we'll move forward now what are we governor is saying that inflation inflation jo hota hai mudra sphiti jise hum kehte hain jisse pata chalta hai mehangai kitni hai to inflation jo india mein hai that is under 4% jo bhi recent data aaya tha aapko august mahine ka usme it is below 4% to jab 4% 
से कम है तो आर गवर्नर का कहना है कि हमारे पास और रूम है जिससे कि हम रेपो रेट को कट कर सकते हैं करंटली रेपो रेट इज स्टैंड एट 5.40 परसेंट सो दिस इज 5.4 परसेंट इज करेंटली द रेपो रेट एंड द अक्टूबर फर्स्ट वीक इज द टाइम when the monetary policy committee will meet and decide on the further rate cut or maintaining the status quo repo rate is a simple thing it is a rate at which rbi lends money to the commercial banks to bank ko agar loan ki zarurat hoti hai to wo rbi se repo rate pe le sakte hain aur repo rate ek benchmark lending rate hai so this is a benchmark lending rate so repo rate is very important because all other loan rates are linked with this so if it goes up all other loan rate will also go up and vice versa so i hope you understand roshan now the next thing is that the monetary policy committee plays an important role and according to the government and rbi and according to their agreement like monetary policy framework agreement we have to maintain 4% of inflation and it can go up to 6% and below to 2% so this is the bracket we have so when shakti kanta das is saying that it is below 4% it means we have more room to cut this repo rate now here what he is saying that right now india is able to maintain price stability so india is able to maintain the price stability and this price stability is very very vital in order to control the inflation because uh, previously in this lecture itself we were discussing about the fiscal policy now we are discussing about the monetary policy and what monetary policy is doing is doing a great job controlling the inflation as well as giving incentives to the banks to lend at a lower rate now here if we say that the inflation in the next one year is expected to be around 4% it means there is a more room to cut the interest rate now if we see that from february to august 2019 rbi cut the interest rate from 6.5% to 5.4% so you can understand almost 110 basis point of reduction of the interest rate now why this is because to boost the economy we need to provide the ease of loans it means low cost loan low cost loan will be provided at a lower interest rate so repo rate currently as i said currently stands at 5.4 and by law we have to keep the inflation rate at 4% plus minus 2% on both the sides now the rbi governor is saying that on the external side so on the external sector the weak demand and lot of the we can say the global risk there is a problem of rise in the crude oil prices just because of the drone attack so drone attack hua hai us wajah se crude oil prices rise hue hain to isse ek volatility aa gayi hai kis mein crude oil market mein to volatility aane se ये रिस्क बढ़ गई है किस चीज़ की क्योंकि इंडिया एक नेट इम्पोर्टर है किसका क्रूड ऑयल का तो इंडिया ऑलमोस्ट 83 परसेंट ऑफ देयर कंजम्पन वो इम्पोर्ट करता है तो इंडिया की डेली की रिक्वायरमेंट है 3.3 मिलियन लीटर पर डे ये इंडिया की रिक्वायरमेंट है 3.3 मिलियन लीटर लगभग 33 लाख लीटर पर डे की रिक्वायरमेंट है पेट्रोल की जिसमें से 83 परसेंट इंडिया इम्पोर्ट करता है तो इंडिया इम्पोर्ट करने से क्या होता है जब ये इंडिया इम्पोर्ट करता है और अगर क्रूड ऑयल प्राइजेस इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे बढ़ जाते हैं तो इंडिया को उतना ही ऑयल इम्पोर्ट करने के लिए ज़्यादा पैसा देना होता है तो उससे क्या होता है इंडिया के जो इम्पोर्ट बिल है वो बढ़ जाता है और इम्पोर्ट बिल बढ़ने से क्या होता है करंट अकाउंट पे जो है वो डेफिसिट आ जाता है जो सी ए डी जिसे हम कहते हैं करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट अब उसको सेट ऑफ करने के लिए और भी तरीके हैं जैसे सर्विसेज या रेमिटांसेज है बट वो लेस इफेक्टिव है अगर ऑयल प्राइसेस बढ़ते हैं तो आर गवर्नर का कहना यही था कि ये 
क्रूड ऑयल प्राइसेस बढ़ने से एक थ्रेट हुआ है इंडियन इकोनॉमी की स्टेबिलिटी पे स्पेशली एक्सटर्नल एक्सटर्नल इकोनॉमी और एक्सटर्नल साइड पे तो ये सारी चीज़ें आज के लेक्चर के लिए इम्पॉर्टेंट थी एंड इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट यू कैन आस्क संगीता तिवारी द फर्स्ट डाउट इन टूडेज न्यूज पेपर एज डिक्लेयर बाई द एफ एम द लिक्विडिटी इज लिमिटेड विद बैंक एंड नॉट ट्रांसफरिंग टू एन बी एफ सी वट डज दिस मीन प्लीज एक्सप्लेन दिस आर्टिकल ऑल दो संगीता दिस इज इन इन टूडेज न्यूज पेपर एंड इफ यू हैव सीन द प्रीवियस हाफ ऑफ दिस लेक्चर सो वी हैव डिस्कस दैट बट अगेन आई एल एक्सप्लेन इन सिंपल सेंस द बैंक्स जनरली ओन सर्टेन काइंड ऑफ एन बी एफ सीज इसका क्या मतलब है दैट एन बी एफ सी मोस्ट ऑफ द ओनर्स आर द बैंक्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू से आई एल एन एफ एस सो द आई एल एन एफ एस द ओनर्स वर एस बी आई द ओनर्स वर एच डी एफ सी सो दीज आर द बैंक्स दैट आर प्रमोटिंग नॉन बैंकिंग फाइनेंस कंपनीज सो एज अ प्रमोटर banks has to give certain kind of money to nbfc and now banks are not transferring why because they have a threat that they will have certain failure into their loans so that is why the important thing so i hope you understand if not then you can again ask in the comment section yeah the next question is from dinesh why government and rbi both are focusing on supply side we can say that government uh, uh, in fiscal policy today focused on the demand side because tax cut will always increase the aggregate demand but what will happen they are not cutting the taxes that is directly to the directly to increase the disposable income so they are cutting the taxes of the private sector now what they are doing they are cutting the taxes for private sector it means they are again thinking that private sector will come and invest in the economy so it means from the government's point of view it is clear that government will not invest they are waiting for the private investment to increase and if the private investment not increasing they are doing the tax cut by corporate income tax so obviously it will have certain impact on income tax but it will be have it will be having a delayed impact on that uh the next question is from sangeeta why it has been said that all the stress loans will not be counted in npa what actually does this what actually does this mean why all the stress loans there are different things stress loans because suppose for example uh, the we can say what is the meaning of the stressed loans so stressed loans it means the npa plus we can say the restructured loans so stressed loans means npa is plus restructured loans what are restructured loans suppose a company is not able to repay so what banks are doing they are increasing the time limit of a loan as well as they are decreasing the interest rate on that so that that particular company if defaulted they are having more time and more room to pay back so these stressed loans are not the part of npa it means they will show npa differently because if you see the stress loans it is around 30.5 lakh crore and if you see npa these are 9.5 9.4 lakh crore so obviously if you see the picture stress loans are looking bigger in size than npa so just a change in the definition nothing else the next question is is it not right to decrease the income tax rate than the corporate tax rate to increase i don't think so dinesh it's a good decision by the government corporate income tax will actually benefit from the two sides it will increase the investment in india so this is a benefit it will again increase the private domestic domestic investment and it will actually restore the confidence 
confidence in the market so you can see from the growth of sensex as well as nifty so these are the important things that actually helped by decreasing the corporate income tax and apart from this this investment means i'm talking about the foreign investment so fdi and this will put private investment up so private investment will go up obviously will boost the economy and restore the market confidence it means related to fpi foreign portfolio investment that in the time of budget we have actually imposed surcharge that actually worked against the fpi investment and the most important thing is that fed interest rate so federal reserves the american central bank reduced the interest rate by 0.25 percent so that actually uh led to we can say in future led to the outflow of capital from india to abroad so fed interest rate will go down so that's why this corporate income tax that we have reduced is able to attract foreign firms into india the next question is from why private investors investment in the economy when there's a lack of demand obviously this is a lack of demand lack of demand is just like you cannot think from one sector perspective like if you see from automobile sector there's a lack of demand so obviously no one will invest but if you see other sectors there are a lot of under utilization of indian economy's capacity so they will invest in other sectors as well not just where the lack of demand is persisting like if you see e-commerce e-commerce is a bulging market like we can say uh, the consumer durables are actually down but other food industries food processing agriculture is having a large scope so food processing industry etc will give boost like walmart if you see the best price the growth is pretty high so there's a lot of growth in logistics as well so they can invest in other sectors as well other sector demand is high obviously there's not much affect the demand of the individuals so individuals demand is as it is so i hope you understand what i want to say uh, the next question is from sangeeta please make a small video regarding the problem of npa problem in india yeah sure i'll make a separate youtube video uh, in around 15 days time because i'm stuck it somewhere so uh, in about 15 days i'll actually explain the npa starting from a b c d to the advanced level so any other doubt if you have you can ask otherwise we'll wind up the session please see that session although i've seen that initial stage of this lecture there were few students but please watch it from starting and it will give you a better insight towards understanding the corporate income tax The next question is from Monesh. Why automobile sector demand has come down? Uh huh. No, no one knows about this because if you see, it is the simple misallocation of demand and supply. Suppose the last season demand for thousand cars were there. Suppose this is two thousand seventeen. Hypothetical example. don't take it seriously suppose there as a demand of 1000 uh, uh, cars and the supply suppose the 800 cars so agar aapko yaad hoga in 2017 if you want to purchase a new model and you have to wait for certain months like the most famous example is of baleno if you try to purchase baleno those are time where you have to wait around 100 uh sorry 100 days 200 days like this so that was the scenario what happened 2018 demand again goes up to 1200 cars suppose and the car manufacturers were able to produce suppose 1100 car but what happened in 2019 because an individual purchase a car maybe for a lifetime so uh a family will purchase two car a normal family will purchase two cars in their lifetime because a car lasts for 15 years that is the according to the norms that indian government norms rto norms so suppose for example the car industry is thinking that growth is going up maybe we are expecting that next year it will come to 1500 cars so they have produced 1400 cars but in the actual 
the demand decreased to 1100 cars. So obviously you can say that there is a deficit. So extra 300 cars they have produced. What will happen to that? So extra 300 cars, what will happen to that? Obviously remain unsold. So that was supply increase. So if you see the automobile sector, this is not a unique feature this time. This time one thing is unique that it is in all like in passenger vehicle as well as commercial vehicle as well as we can say two wheelers, tractors etc. So in every segment there is a crisis. Otherwise if you have actually taken the history of automobile sector there is always a crisis. Like in every four year, five year there is always a problem of oversupply. But sometimes in cars, sometimes in commercial vehicles, sometimes two wheelers. But this time the crisis is severe just because simultaneously it is occurring in all the important segments. So uh, that's the end of this lecture and if you have any doubt you can also ask otherwise we'll wind up the session. So thank you for tuning in to Ecoholics. Tomorrow we'll meet again with the uh, uh, and more elaborated analysis of this economic reforms package and once this reform stage over we'll discuss at a particular lecture that what kind of package and what's the impact what is the correlation between these important uh, reforms yeah i'll uh, make a video on fdi and fi What's the difference? What is foreign investment sector? So sure, sure I'll make. Sure Rajesh, uh, do subscribe Ecoholics so you'll get the notification and click on the bell icon as well. So you'll get the notification for that. I'll make for sure and please try to share Ecoholics as many people as well. So if you have friends, what I was saying that if you want to increase the knowledge of economics, do discuss a lot with your friends. So if you take up one important topic and discuss uh, between the two or among four or five people you are having in your uh, nearby area or college or wherever you are doing. So thank you so much once again for tuning in to Ecoholics and we'll see you soon tomorrow that is 10.30 again. Good night. Thank you so much.